With a beautiful Quad HD display, 3GB of RAM and a Snapdragon 808 CPU, the LG G4 stands as a very great flagship smartphone even today and is available for around about £200 on the used sector. However, I didn't purchase it to be my daily driver as such, but more as a network testing device. And this sort of hidden feature is incredibly useful for network testers. So the LG G4 has a fully featured field test mode. So now I will do a full review at a later date, but today I'm going to launch straight into the field test mode and show you around a little bit. Now to launch it, is a fairly simple code of star hash five four six three six eight hash star eight one five hash where the eight one five is the model number of your LG G4. So if I just tap on that, we then get this menu up here. Now just ignore the other menus there and then we can go into field test and from that again ignore most of those and then go into modem settings and then these options are what we're really interested in. So with rat selection here, we can select what kind of rat we want to have. So LTE only is obvious, so it's 4G only. And there are the other options there, so LTE slash WCDMA, 4G slash 3G. So if you don't want to see 2G, um, so quite often I'll stick it on that. However, some phones do have modes like that. So for example, some phones with a little add-on app like the Moso G will also do that as well. So the really interesting stuff comes from stuff like network mode here. So through this menu we can select which 2G and 3G frequencies you want the phone to be on. So if I say stick it on GSM 900 it will now go on 2G 900. So eventually we should see a little sort of E appear on the signal bar there to indicate uh, 2G 900 megahertz, but the signal here is a bit weak, so it might take a little bit of time to actually do that. And we can also see here the WCDMA options. So there we go, we've got the little E appearing up in the corner there. So um, we have W3G 900 and 3G 2100, which are the two UK bands, but this phone does also support others. So if I just stick it on WCDMA 900, you can see it says success there. And then the E up in the corner has now switched to an H, but I don't know how visible that is on this camera. But it's very clearly an H. Now, my area is quite rural, so certainly on Vodafone, the 3G is mainly 900, and the 2100 doesn't tend to st stretch this far, but I can, I've just put it in 3G 2100. So we can actually see it has just about, it has displaying, is displaying H, so it has got some signal but it's not displaying it's got one signal bar there but we can see the signal is somewhat weaker but this is this can be quite useful in towns and cities where there are where there's 3g 900 and 3g 2100 on say Vodafone Note 2 and you want to see the kind of difference in speed because obviously 3g 2100 has got much more bandwidth than the 900 does and likewise actually with the 2g 900 and 2g 1800 at the bottom there so Vodafone O2 don't have all that much 2G 1800 around nowadays, mostly focusing on 2G 900 and refarming the 1800 over to 4G, but it can still be nice to see the 2G 1800 around the place. Um, and it's not just for 2G and 3G, we can also set the 4G band, and you see this phone supports a whole array of 4G bands here. So if I stick it on band 20, because this is... Vodafone SIM, so band 20 or 800 forms the sort of their main 4G layer. And we should see the 4G letter appear in the corner there, which it has done now. And as you can see, once again, the 4G signal here is quite weak. However, like I said, in some areas, it can be quite useful to do this. So if you want to see, say, the 2100 4G coverage in an area, setting the phone to band 1 and just sort of travelling around, is a good way to go about that without the sort of distraction of the other bands. Now, what you would know, what you probably notice there is when I say select a band, it says fail, but despite saying fail, it does actually succeed, so I'm not entirely sure why it says that. 
And I'm not just saying that, I've tested this on a whole variety of different bands. There's band 1, band 3 and band 7, which are the 800 MHz, 1800 MHz, 2100 and 2600 MHz 4G, but not necessarily in the order I just said. So basically all the 4G bands that are in use in the UK, and it says fail when I select each of them, but it does actually connect to that band, which we can then establish through the engineering mode option here so this then gives the detailed information about the different bands if i just hop on to uh, lte here we can see that it's on band 20 so 800 with 10 megahertz of bandwidth and we can see the various cell information there and if we just press down this is what we will see if the phone's on CAT6, so this will be populated with the second 4G carrier. But as there is only one 4G carrier here, only the LTE Zero option is filled. So, that's an incredibly useful testing feature for basically network testing, which goes way beyond what you get on, say, the Moto G, which only has the ability to, say, set the phone to 4G or 3G for example and also the de detailed information about what the phone is actually connected to that I just showed goes a bit beyond what other devices have as well so all in all if you want to sort of do lots of network testing the LG G4 is very much the device to get. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video which is quite likely to be actually the full on review of the LG G4. So I hope you found this video to be interesting.